Okay, it's the dawn of a new day today. And then, as I probably stated before, I don't really want to do this. This is obviously the G77X. And if I seemed a little sour about the G55X, <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. So, I think we're just going to make this a day of show and tell because I really just don't even want to work on this thing. So, uh, let me open it up here and I'll show you a couple things. Okay, if a picture is worth a thousand words, let these boxes speak for themselves. Here is my box of components for the G55X. And here is my boxes of components for the G77X. So, take a look at that and think about this. Is it really worth it? Alright. <clears throat> Very first problem. This amplifier has no ability to hold itself together. You got to be very careful how you handle this thing because there's just no words. Um, you can't even call this a chassis. So uh, anyone familiar with this, maybe you can think of a word, but I'm just pretty much dumbfounded to even come up with one. So we'll kind of address that issue first, uh, a cabinet that doesn't hold itself together. Obviously we could strip this whole thing down and pick it apart and uh, fab up a new box for it and spend a year and $2,000 and put all this stuff into a nice box uh, <clears throat> that would probably uh, look just as good or close to as good, um, which I've actually considered doing. But, you know, the electronics that are in this box um, just don't facilitate that much time and effort um, to even modify the chassis um, at best. So, with that in mind, you know, you got a 30-pound transformer sitting in a plastic box. And anytime you need to work on this, at least a large percentage of the time, you're going to have to pull that transformer out. And that's going to be a headache. So, let me show you what I did to try to alleviate some of that problem. All right. Down here on the primary board, to the primary of the transformers, was this cheap little connector set in there. And anytime you wanted to pull the transformer out, you had to unwrap all those wires and hopefully remember which order they were in or not make a mistake putting them back even if you labeled them. And then you had to solder them because, of course, it's a mains connection. And um, just right off the bat, anytime you're dealing with a mains connect, uh, connection, it's always a good idea uh, and more proper to the point to have a soldered and also a mechanical connection at the same time, which this connector does not fit. Um, so what I did was pull that connector out put some new Teflon wires on this, ran it into the board there, drilled the holes out a little bit larger to get the Teflon in, which I thought was undersized from the start on what Sansui used. And then pulled the wires down and soldered them as far back the path as I could. Um, so it's just not spot soldered in, in a uh, small area. It's pulled, uh, you know, like quarter, three-eighths, half an inch down the length of the path, uh, which is always going to be a party bonus. Um, since there isn't technically a mechanical connection like there needs to be, there was just no way that I could get barrier strips, and I certainly wasn't going to pull this whole board out and make a board that's more suitable. It just wasn't even worth it, so I did the best I could with what I had to work with. So... There is your new barrier. 
for the transformer. So anytime you need to pull the transformer out, it's a tad easier. All you do is lift up this cheap little cover that I put on there, because that's what I had to work with. Pop out these screws and pop this all off. And I just ran two pieces of ABS down the length of it and um, glued it all together with epoxy so that w when you're constantly pulling this transformer out, you can't accidentally switch up the wires, which is was my primary concern from the very get-go so the whole thing pulls off as one and then all you got to do is do your normal four screws and um, pull these ground wires off the one um, ring terminal lug or spade terminal lug um, to get the transformer out so it's a lot easier doing it in that fashion than it is to unwrapping and soldering wires. That gives you a good idea. I'm not sure the perspective of, the, of this camera is very good right now with the, the height of it. So that's probably one of the first things you're going to want to do if you intend on working on this amp is uh, do something better with that transformer. So here obviously is your primary wires coming from your transformer. I didn't show or didn't say this, but I kind of thought you would get the gist of it. But just in case, there's your primary wires and they just come into this barrier strip which is actually physically glued to the top of the transformer. It wasn't ideal, um, but it's the best I could come up with. So um, everything will just pop apart and like I said, this here will come off all as one piece so you don't have to worry about um, did I flip up the wires and, and not know it. So now next problem. What do I do when the volume control is shot and I can't find a 150k pot for it? <clears throat> you get yourself all stressed out. I'll tell you that's exactly what happens. So this is what I did. See if I can get this camera adjusted here. I've invested in these cheap little things, which coincidentally aren't too cheap when you buy them. But they're very cheaply made. But, you know, it is what it is. So, it's a 100K pot with a loudness tap on it. It's going to be way overpriced. But it's about the only option sometimes. So... Typically on these units, um, you always run into the problem that you need around a 30 millimeter shaft, but you don't have a 30 millimeter pot. So what do you do? You make one. Well, I'm not a mechanical engineer that has a big tool shed and um, accessories out here, so I do what I basically can the easiest way I know how, and that's epoxy. So I just wrapped a shaft with uh, um, masking tape and built that edge up with two-part epoxy and um, I actually did two of these um, just to prepare myself for the future so uh, unfortunately this is the one that I didn't finish so then I just after I build that up and let that cure for several days I just notched this part of the shaft out and notch it straight down through and just uh, make a half shaft out of it and uh, you got to have a pair of calipers for this and it's a whole long drawn out process uh, it's got to be pretty much exactly right and you got to do a couple dry fits on it to make sure that uh, the knob the bushing for the knob isn't back here grinding against this um, but it happens it goes it goes right in um, you just have to to wire this pot um, into the existing which is a whole other conversion that I can touch on sometime um, with what those actual connections are and, and uh, the flipping of those connections to, to get them into one of these pots. This was our original D shaft that came out of it. Um, it's a real piece of garbage. It has all kinds of tracking errors uh, on the lower end of the pot on the wiper. Uh, just like a lot of pots do, but maybe this one's a little bit worse. 
so that's the original depot that came out of it and uh, looks like we're about the same length eyeballing it mine might be a tad bit shorter um, so that's that now I'm gonna skip over um, what I went through to put that new pot in there because that's gonna take like an hour and I'm gonna have to take some stuff apart so I'm just gonna hit this one real quick since it's setting in front of me this thing had to come out of the back and there's many reasons for that first of all this thing is so heavy so awkward and so poorly put together that getting it in and out of the rack is just about hazardous so the last thing you want is to be hung up on a stupid line cord and have the line cord caught on something on the back of the rack and you're trying to get this to the table and, and in the process of setting it on your knee or something and reaching with the other arm you accidentally drop the whole thing so we needed to avoid that so we took this stupid thing out which is about half a fire hazard to start with and put one of these EIC or IEC I get these backwards EIC I don't know doesn't matter so we put one of these EIC connectors in um, it's not perfect but uh, it was an easy way to get it in there it didn't require um, you know special tools and stamps and uh, stuff like that to cut it out the opening was already there um, and I just mounted that on a piece of ABS uh, which is real easy to work with and uh, fastened that in what was a headache I do remember this was getting this bugger out of that hole was a huge huge headache um, you would think it would have just popped right out but it didn't um, it hung up on the very top and I had to grind and cut like a tab or something that it was hung up on I had to grind that out and then I after fighting with it for 15 to 20 minutes uh, then I finally got it out and uh, everything was better so that's the other thing now for <laughs> for something that may be humorous God have mercy on me this is the actual paper that I used to get that volume control in there. What a mess. You can see that it was a lot of lines, a lot of circles, and a lot of epoxy. So let me get this paper into some better shape and maybe I can help you with uh, the changeover of these pots. All right, this is the primer if you understand what I mean by a primer um, for getting another pot in there so I did all the hard work here I transposed all the connections if you wanted to put another 100k pot in here um, or another pot that's not a board mount pot or whatever uh, this is what you're going to have to go off of this was all the hard work I don't know how many hours it took me to track all this out there's no errors in this it's absolutely right uh, you will be looking at the uh, original Sansui pot from the rear there's your six pins on top your two loudness taps on the bottom um, just like that and there's your connections right channel in on six left channel in on five and so on and so on so all you have to do is uh, get your connections pull your connections all off of this pot or your new pot that you want to put in and apply it to this and uh, that will be the electrical part of it and then uh, obviously there's still the mechanical aspect of what you need to do to get it in there uh, but that's the hard part right there okay there's a snapshot the best I can see in that really small space with the camera it focuses you can see I tied a bunch of uh, 
wire wrapped together. Small stuff, 30 gauge. And ran, I don't know, I twist like three of them together just because that's what I do. Twist uh, three different pieces of 30 gauge together real tight. I wind them up on a drill and uh, I use that because I like working with nylar wire. It's fun to mess with. So I just ran the connections from the pot right down into the uh, original uh, six pin connector. Well the six pins, not a connector, but the six pins on the board back here. There I guess you can see a little bit better. You can't really see the shaft because of the wiring's in the way. Uh, but there's a, a bushing and that bushing comes up and uh, just hits on the very edge of the pot. Um, so I put some Vaseline on it. The control is not uh, super easy to turn because of that little bit of friction there. Uh, kind of stepping the control up and um, actually that worked out to the advantage. I like it more that, that way so I didn't bother to make any adjustments to it. So that's what we got there. I'm not going to spend a, a long period of time on this but I'm just going to hit this lightly because there's so much to it. Um, but there's our new pots on the amp board. Obviously the other one's hidden by the cables, but it's back there. So uh, the one on the left there is the uh, 100 ohm, your offset pot, and then the one on the right is your uh, 470 ohm, I believe it is, um, which is your DC balance pot. Um, I use multi-turns for all these, uh, but just to let you know, uh, when you try to do this, you should have a PC drill because you're going to be moving some holes and oftentimes you'll be flipping leads on the pots. Um, I'm not sure I even want to go down that road but sometimes the pots are backwards. In other words the pot wants to face the bottom of the board so there's some cool little things you can do just to reform the leads and get them going in the right direction. Sometimes you have to extend them a little bit. Um, that's kind of a science how I do that too. Um, but there's new pots on the amp board. Not as organized as I thought I was because uh, I can't find the offset pots in this pile of bags. So I'm going to have to look. But there's the bias pots that I used. Looking through multiple lenses. Uh, PT6KV-102A 2020. They're 6mm uh, rounds from Amphenol. That's what I use for the bias pots. Phone says I'm out of memory, so I'll have to continue. Thanks for watching.